Welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poo Harding, and that's my partner in crime back, you know, the artist extraordinaire, Jamel Powell. And we here doing it live with my man, Richie Parker. That's right, Richie Parker, the Harlem legend. We're gonna talk about it. Alright? So this broadcast is sponsored by Styles by Nita and Unique Creations. And I wanna get a big shout out to my boy at 496 Sports. My guy, my friend, Devon Jones, who hooked me up. And this is gonna be a special gift I'm gonna give out, you know, to one of the audience members, whoever can answer that Gaucho's question. If you can answer that Gaucho's question and name all the players and the coaches and the owner, you got this bag, all right? So, with that being said, Let's start the show. You're ready. You're ready. You're ready. Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out into, into, into the, the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on. Come on. Go hard. Tickets cause the game about to start. Yo, what's good? What's going on, brother? Tell him what's going on. Everything good? How are you? Oh, oh man, I'm blessed, brother. Holly blessed, brother. You know. Especially the climate that's going on in the country right now, you know? Yeah, I know, it's crazy. Yeah, man. Last time I saw you, man, what was it Winsburg? Yeah, that was a long time. Yeah, you 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 were you was reffing uh my kids in the game, was it? That was uh where was that at again? Uh, I think yeah, we yeah. was playing. The high school. Uh, yeah, yeah, and we got smoked by you know. <laughs> but we'll talk about another time, man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all good. That yeah, but good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. Yeah, man, I wanted to get you on, man, because your name has been coming up in a lot of conversations and different interviews, and people been throwing your name out there. You've been on a team or played against you or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. even the audience members, we saw with Richie Parker, so I definitely want to get you on and. <laughs> And I, appreciate, I appreciate it. I want to say thank you before we start. I appreciate it. No doubt. And, and this is the show where we want to give our brothers their flowers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what it's all about. Uh, I, I started this show because uh, I see Lamar Odom on Drink Champs. And I, and I always say this story, man. I reiterate it all the time. And I just felt like he wasn't treated fairly, you know? And I yeah, think I if he was Right, if he was amongst you know ball brothers and talk about w what made him Lamar Odom, which was the basketball, not the scandal. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I think they was it, it came off more like they were trying to set him up. They were trying to right. They kept initiative. There you go. There you go. And then me and my guys, you know, they kept throwing it at me like, "Yo, G, you need to start the show," and I kept pushing them off. But after seeing that. You know, it definitely pushed me to do this, man. So I'm I'm glad to have you here, my brother. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you're doing it. Congrats. Right. Yeah. So what I like to ask all my guests is, who introduced you to the game? Um, basically, dudes in my neighborhood. You know, I was always the young one hanging out with the older guys, and we used to go to the park and play. And you know, 21 was big back in the day, so. Yes. Yeah, like, yes. Like have a twenty-one game with like twenty people on one court. <laughs> Fact. You know Fact. Yeah. And besides that, they used to yeah, back in the days. Used to be, it used to be something called bumps. Right. Boom. If you have the lowest score, you had to bend over. <laughs> he laughed in the back. You had to bend yeah. over. Yeah. The game. Me, the dude uh, threw the ball me. at you. They threw the ball at you. Right. So I started playing. I was young. I started playing with the older cats. I got top losing. <laughs> so. And if you got 20 guys on the court, I kept picking dudes out who score more than him. Because some dudes, they have true, and, and they good. Right. So I started picking dudes out, like, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a score more than him. I'm going to score more than him until I got to the top person that always won. I had a dude on my block. He won mostly every game. 
Wow. Once I got to him, then, you know, then I, I started moving to Douglas and, and all the Douglas projects. So uh -huh. I, I, that's where I started. Because they used to have something, okay. they used to have something called Super Bitties and Bitties. But, but when I played Super Bitties, they had to move me up because I was scoring too much. Wow. So, so then so they, how? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. they moved me up to Bitties and I was scoring too much there. And since then, I've just been playing with older, older guys. Right, and and I wanted to say that too. Like, how important you think was playing like uh, Utah Twenty One, uh, you know, bottom bumps, you know, all those games that help you develop your competitive edge. Well, it was real important. That's why, you know, that 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 was the fire for when you went to go play in the big tournaments. You was already competitive. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays they don't have games like that. Dudes, kids nah. ain't playing them games no more. So the competitive right. is not there. So if they play against their friends, I call it buddy ball. You know, they, yes. play, against, they, play, against <laughs> they play against their friends and they're not going hard. So right. it, it translates for when they go play against the top player in the country or all the other people, they, they just not playing hard. And, and it's funny that you say that because that's the name of the theme song of the show is Go Hard or Go Home. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's all I know how to do. Yeah. Right? You put yourself in a situation and you want to compete. Right? You want to compete against the best. And sometimes, you know, when you're younger, you got to compete against all the guys who are going to bump you, knock you down, not give you your calls. Right? How important was that on your game? Well, that, that was important because when you, when you played against your age group, you could take the contact. You was already used to it because the, the right. old dudes wasn't, you know, they wasn't taking it easy on you. They was hitting you. They they was doing everything to try to prove that you wasn't ready to be on their court. Mm. So it was important because when you, if you can take that hit, when you go play in your age group, you you can dominate. Right. Yeah. In our neighborhood, we had a a, a court. Right. It was called blood sport. Right. We had four courts. All the rest of the courts were four courts. Uh -huh. Right. And you can play half if you want, but it was just one half court court that was on or to the side and yeah. that's where the older guys played and they like played in jeans you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. like they was coming from work and playing and they called the blood sport because they didn't call that much and it was it was rough and some yeah. dudes who just came home from jail whatever that's where they would play yeah but and the older guys when you got to develop or if you wanted to develop you went and played the blood sport and by yeah. the time you went back and played against your age group, the, the contact you know, wasn't, it wasn't a problem. Good because right. the old dudes was really trying to make you bleed. Especially, yes. Especially the dudes that just came home. So if you if you could take that contact, you could definitely take the contact. If you 15, 14, 15, or 14, 15 year old hitting you, hitting you like that, it's nothing. Right. Which is crazy. Who was the best player in your neighborhood? Was that kid who won all the tw 21 games, was he the best player in your neighborhood at the time? At the time, because he was more athletic. You know, he wasn't tall, but he was more athletic. His name was Greg. He he was athletic. You know, he could jump high. He, he Right. You know, so and he was quicker than everybody. So, but but it's hard. You you had to develop when you're playing 21, 20 yes. foot. You might have five guys guarding you. <laughs> yes. you, to, yes. you really had to develop a jump shot because you wasn't getting to the basket. Right. Uh, you know, so so it's like that. When you check it up, five dudes is coming at you. You had to you had to have a quick release. Right. Uh, you know, so so he he was. I could say he was more athletic. You know, but you know, after the years went on, I started to get taller. I started to shoot. That was that was the main person I was going to the court to aim after. Mm. And that transferred to to full court. You know, you had the older guys, and the thing was, if you lost, you might not get back on the court. Right, right. It's Those 20, days guys, tough. 20 guys waiting to get on the court. Yep. So how, how I realized I became good is when I lost and dudes were holding me a spot on the next game. Like, yo, yo, you with us. Right. I th I'm thinking I'm going home. And they like, yo, you playing with us. Come on. That's when I, I was like, all right, yeah. <laughs> okay.
Okay, okay. You you kind of arrived then, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, who were some of the guys you came up with that was in your neighborhood that we all know about now? In my neighborhood, well, well, I was like I said, I was a younger guy. You probably you probably heard of Corey, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Probably that. Um, you know, from my neighborhood, Mario Mario Ellie was from my neighborhood. Word? Yo. <laughs> I need to get Mario Ellie on this show. I just put up a picture of um, him, uh, him and Chris Mullins playing that Power Memorial. Yeah, I, I try, I try to find somebody to connect with Mario. Oh man, Mario, that, Mario, that'd be Mario, awesome. was from, Mario was from from Douglas. Yeah, yeah, he's official. So you had you had Dal Walker that played at Seton Hall. Yeah, played against Dal out of the high school. Yeah, Dal was from Douglas. You know, we we had a couple, we had we had we had a couple guys from Douglas, but the thing was. I wasn't from Douglas. Mm. You know, I grew up on 110th, but I hung out and played in Douglas so much. <laughs> and right. I was from Douglas. Right. You know, but that's that's where that's where I can say it started for me, basketball. Okay, okay, okay. You played junior high school ball? Yeah, I played junior high school. That's how uh, I played. I went to AES. It's called Envi Environmental Academy of Environmental Science. Okay. I played there. Uh, we had we had they had a little junior high school league, and I and I was playing there. I was I was scoring like forty a game. Right, and that's how I got recognized. Damn. That's how I got recognized from Manhattan Center. Forty a game in junior high school. That's fucking yeah. crazy. I I was actually I was actually scoring forty in elementary in the in the school league. Wow. Yeah. So, so was you ranked at this time, like in junior high school? Did they, did they do nah, that? Back, back in the days, you wasn't getting ranked in junior high school. You know they do it now. You know right. you, you was getting ranked in high school. Okay. And okay. It, to, it, I don't think it was nobody that was really being ranked in junior high school. Right. Right. And something like Kenny Anderson, yeah. some shit like that, <laughs> who was like number one in first grade, yeah. number one in second grade, number one in third grade. Yeah. Kenny. You know, guys like that. Shout out to Kenny. Kenny, yeah. was, Kenny was special, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's my guy. That's my guy. Uh, so, after dominating in junior high, what made you go to Manhattan Center? Well, it's crazy because I was going to go to Rice. Wow. I was like I was like 90% going to Rice. And then, Why didn't you go there? The thing was, uh, it was one summer before... Before I, I decided where I was going to go, the coach at Manhattan Center, Evander Ford. Yes. And, and, and Richie McGon was the coach at the time. And they uh they ended up taking me and Cam. Yeah, right now, Cam played ball first. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so me, they wanted me and Cam to come there together. So one summer, they took, a, they took their team to Puerto Rico, and they're like, yo, we taking you and Cam with us. Come on. And it just it just fit. Evander Ford was perfect. Mm. So, and, and me and Cam was like, "Yo, we going to Manhattan Center." And they and they already, oh. had, they already they already had a power out. They already was stacked already. Right. So, yeah. So it, it was really like that. Summer changed my mind because I was more likely I was going to Rice. Because I that was definitely one of my questions. Uh, were were you and Cam uh tight in before uh Manhattan Center? Yeah, yeah, you know. Like, y'all came up in junior high school and all that? Or played I mean, against each other? Before then, but we really got close and, and, and as we was coming to Manhattan Center. But, you know, back in the days, Cam was a Riverside kid. Cam played with Young Life. You know, we all was connected to uh, the Thurman player, Coach Thurman. Okay, okay. So it made sense. It made sense to go to Manhattan Center. It made sense because, uh, like like I said, the reason, the thing that really sold me on Manhattan Center was Coach Ford. You know, Ford was an amazing coach. You and know, who was that Rice during this time? It was, uh, was Felipe there? Was Felipe, Felipe there? Yeah, Felipe, Julius, uh, Gary Saunders. They all were, they, they had that team right there. I think Reg had it. Reg was there too. Reg Freeman. Yeah, they were stacked. So I see, I see in your mind, you and Cam like, okay, they stacked over there. We can go build something over here. No, man, I said it was stacked already. They were stacked as well. In the PSAL, Madison Center was like one of the, was the top team. 
I, I know that because we, you know, we beat you on the, uh, in 86. In the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, it was that. What, what happened was, besides the Vanderford, Ford, like, they, in, in the Harlem area, because it was right there right. from the side, they was making a lot of noise. And they used, Ford used to put the team in summer tournaments. So they used to have the, the shorts. It used to have prom time on the back. Right, right. So everybody was trying to get these shorts. If you had, <laughs> if you had them shorts, you knew, you knew it was my center. You know, right, like, right. I knew people that went there and played before before me, so I was like, I'm going mad. Nice, nice, they, nice. Like I said, they were stacked already because they went to the garden my first year. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, uh, were you cool with Carlton Hines any? And, and, and uh, who was that? Uh, Andre McCollum? Yeah, I'm cool with Dre. But Carl okay, Carl okay. Was cool for me. I wasn't really, you know, I knew about right. him, but I wasn't cool. I wasn't cool with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah Andre, Andre, rest Andre, rest Andre, in peace, Andre, that, that was my guy. Yeah, nah, Carl, Carl was the truth. Yes, definitely, definitely. Carl was the truth. Definitely. Very, very humble brother. Yeah. Yeah. So what you was about, you was finishing up saying something? No, so I, I was saying Andre. And they had Frank Weston before me. Okay, okay. They had Ellen Richardson. And, and when I got, like I said, when I got there, they were stacked already. You know, I just, I fit in. I went in and I said, I'm taking somebody's spot. Right. <laughs> who, who did you find in your game after, like? Um, I don't really have somebody, you mean like the neighborhood cat or school? No, nah, just in general. Just somebody, you know, just in. You know, maybe an NBA cat or you know, a dude that was in college. I was a big Jordan fan. Mm. Like I, like that's that's the problem now with kids. Now I study tape. I study watch games. So I was I was a big Jordan fan. I was a every day watch. Was it come fly with me? <laughs> you know, I watched that like right. a million times. But I was a big Jordan fan. Like people that, people that play football or play college ball, I ain't really. I had like my whole game. You know, you hear people say, this guy was cool, this guy was true. So I, I took a little piece of everybody. Okay, okay. That was one of the reasons why you went number 23, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I wore that since, yeah. since I started playing basketball. Mm. So I just put up a clip, right, which came from uh, my guy Eric Hicks at Game Over Sports. We're going to uh, interview him Sunday. Um, he run a, a, a awesome grassroots program here in Brooklyn, and he got put up some footage of you in the game. Okay. One time you come down, God holding you, boom, you bake up, go to the hole, lay it up. Nice. Next play, they put a smaller guard on you, you backing down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of Jordan. So I'm, I'm now that you say that, I'm putting you know putting the clip together, right? Uh -huh. You backing down. Boom, the layup, miss it, tap in, rebound, because he's uh -huh. smaller than you. Yeah. Now, they put the big guy on you, right? All into the three, you know, 20-second clip. They put the big guy on you. You come down, boom, crossover, go past him, dunk it right in his face, and the other dude face as well. Yeah. So I, I was just showing my guy uh, that for the Jews, like, oh, dude was serious. I was like, nah, he had game. He had like an all-around game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it's good to show people who haven't seen or don't know, right? So they can be enlightened in what's going on, even us kicking it right now, you know? Yeah, you, you know you know what it is? Like I said, I, I created, like, my own style of play. You know, right. I, was more, I was more of a scorer. But I, I had high basketball IQ. So yes. You can put a big person on me, I knew I was going to go past you. You put a little person... I'm gonna post you up. You know, I wasn't. I was. I was six five, like in high school. You know, during high school, I was about six four. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I was more. I knew the game. So uh, when you put them different matchup on me, you know, I, I, I knew what I had to do at a certain time to score. Right. But I, I, I seen that clip though. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's dope. That's dope. That, 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 that was Gun Hill told me. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. Yeah. So you put your name all uptown, like, 
they they definitely know what time it is. And then later on, you come down to Brooklyn and you do your thing, which is yeah. which is good, right? We are, we'll we'll definitely get to that. Um, what AAU team did you play for? I was a Riverside kid. Okay. I played. All right. I played, Rivers, I played Riverside. I started out. I played like one year with Menacing. They they up in Harlem. God bless them, Derek Ron Carlos. Yes, was, yes. Ron, Ron was my coach. It was me, Sham God, uh, Jazz Total Package. We had a nice school, and we went to Low Lads with Ron Carlos with Menacing. And we ran, right. we ran through everybody, Gauchos, Stephenum. We ran through Riverside. And then mm. when I came home, Riverside was like, yo, we want you to come play with us. And I went, I went, to, play with, I went to play with Riverside and never told Ron Carlos. Right. So we ended up playing Menacing. We, we ended up playing Menacing in a championship game in the Bronx called Cadet Court. And okay. that's, that's how he found out. Ron has been nice. for about 10 years. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> he to me for a long time. Right, right. But you know, but yeah. but Riverside developed my game because even when I went to Riverside in ninth grade, Miss Lloyd and Coach Stern put me on the older team once again. I was playing with older guys, so right. I was on the older team. I was in ninth grade, and I think me, me and. Me and Kareem, we was the only one that they put on the older team. Kareem was in fifth, I was in ninth, and we was playing with wow. we was playing with the older team. Like eighty percent of my older team was from Brooklyn. <laughs> wow. So we, Who are some of the guys on that team? Brooklyn. You remember? We played, we played, and we lost maybe one or two games in two years. Who are some of the people on your, on that team? Uh, it was me. Besides, your besides me and Kareem, it was uh yeah. Kevin Simmons. We had Ed Alissima, mm -hmm. Lou McNeil, Selden Jefferson. Yes, sure. Uh, Jermaine from Brooklyn, they call him Sunshine with the UNLV. Yeah, yeah. We had uh, Jamal Robinson, Charles Jones, uh, Miss Joyce for Stackhouse one year to play with us. Mm. We, uh, I, I know I probably left a couple of dudes out, but. Yeah, no, we, no. I, I, I profiled. I profiled Riverside. I think yesterday, even yesterday or today, um, because I, I knew that's the team that you played for, and the amount of McDonald All Americans they had, and the uh, amount of pros that they had, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're speaking on them developing your game, I just wrote down Garfield Smith, right? My yeah. guy with the Maryland. Uh, he he said his whole game was developed by Riverside. Yeah, yeah, because because the practice practice was was harder than the game, right? You know, but it was like you competed because when you went to Riverside or Gaucho's tryout, it might be two hundred guys in the gym trying out, but they only know they got two spots, and and that's how that's how they create the B and C team, you know. But you right, right, you wasn't really going nowhere. You wasn't traveling. If you was on the BNC team, you was the local team. That right. was to rep represent the organization while the A team was on the road. So, you know, I just, when mm. I was on Riverside, I had to make sure, you know, I was on the A team. Yeah, it, that's what he said, too. He kind of worked his way up till he got to that to that stage where he was traveling. Yeah, so, I was uh, on the Riverside. Like, like I said, Mr. Lois, they put me on the older team with the older guys. So I played the older and I played with the younger, but my first summer with Riverside, I played with the older guys. We lost we lost two games in two years. Mm. Yeah, we lost two games. Uh -huh. We we were so good. We were so good when we played the Golden Hoops. Miss Lloyd wanted to take he wanted to bring Stackhouse and everybody was like, No, we good. Mm. Yeah. yeah, bring Al Qaeda in and, and probably mess things up that's already going on, right? Yeah. I mean, he bought them, but he, he, we was like, we good. <laughs> right, okay. So now, you know, we we in uh, band center and you and Cam there. How are you guys playing together? Well, my first when we first got there, we didn't even play together the first year because Cam fell off Okay. the regular season. And then they was looking forward to us playing in the playoffs. Cam came back on the playoffs, and I fell off in the playoffs. 
and they end up they end up going to the garden. We lost to Brandeis, which when I played, we beat Brandeis twice in the regular season, easy. So we either, if I play, we either won the we either won the garden. Huh? Now, now I know right now you you're like this story, like damn man. If if only if I'm in that situation, you know we got this chip right here, right? Yeah, I would have def I would have definitely had a chip because we lost by one. When we beat Brandeis both times, we won by probably double, almost double figures in the regular season. And uh, yeah, I would have I would have definitely had a chip. Oh, okay, Mace play too. Who? Mace. Mace who? Mace yeah, Mace. Mace was on our team. Mace on the team too. Okay, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Me, me, so yeah, yeah. Mace, Mace was on our team. How how good how, how good was Mace? I know how good Cam was. How good was Mace? Mace Mace was good, but Mace Mace was more the defender. You know. So oh, the defender, defender got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Got you. Four, four of them put Mace on. Mace always wanted to guard the best player. You know, that's, Mace, that's, Mace, that's, Mace that's said a lot. Yeah, Mace was a defender. You know, but right. if, you left him over, if you left him over, he could knock the shot down, but he was more a defender. Me and, me and Cam was more of a scorer. Oh, okay, okay. So when y'all finally got back together, did y'all ever play a full season together? Yeah, we played my second year. We played a full season. Me and Cam was in the backcourt. Cam played the one, I played the two. Mm. How did y'all do that yet? We, uh... <clears throat> we went... I think we lost one game the whole season, and then we lost we lost first round in the in the playoffs. <laughs> wow! Yeah, it was crazy. We were, we lost like one or two games during the regular season. We was like the top team in the city, and then we end up losing. See, but you, one thing about Madison the two, I, I had like four coaches. That that could be a big problem. Yeah, it's, up, you know, um, like the middle coaches. Of the yeah, like the middle of the season, a new coach come in, so you had to learn another for a lot. It, it was crazy. It's now hold on, you look fuzzy. You look fuzzy. Yo, everybody give me a thumbs up if you can see Rich Clear. I need to know, is Rich screen clear? Because you look you fuzzy me? on my end. You see me now? Yeah, I can see you, but it's just a little bit fuzzy. And I don't even know if it's STEM. Stim, you're in the building. Let me know if you can see Rich, uh, Rich Parker clear. Give me a thumbs up. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Yeah, I see you clear. Yeah. Now I can see you much better now. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Now, got you. Good looking out, Stim. It's my partner right there. Uh -huh. Um. Okay, now, did y'all ever get back to the garden? No, never got back to the garden. We like we we was on the we was on the verge of going to the garden my last year, but I didn't play. Right, right. We lost we lost, so, a, we lost a Lincoln in the semifinals. <laughs> Yo, that's like the story of your life, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if, if I play, if I play, I'm going. No, no, there's nothing like when dudes go. <laughs> yeah, we lost the link, and I just be like, yeah. I no, what's what, what's crazy was I didn't play, but we only lost by like three. Right. So my man. You oh, know, and we know you. You you made. Trust me, you made a big difference. Yeah, my backcourt, my backcourt made Dwayne Jordan. I mean Thomas Coleman, and my center Dwayne Jordan. They held it down. If, nice. I play, if I play with I won that game. All right, we're going to get this right out the bag right now, right? Because we know right now you top 50 in the country. Who ass did you bust that summer, <laughs> right? <laughs> Who ass did you bust that, that summer? Because I know it was a big summer for you, right? Who ass did you bust that summer and let you know, you know what? Ain't nobody with me. Well, what happened was my junior year in the summer, I got invited – they, they, I got invited to Nike All American Camp in Chicago. Nice. And and I went, I went with the mind frame of, I think by that time I was like top one hundred. Hmm. I was top one hundred. You know, I was like top sixty, and I was like, I went to camp like, when I leave here, I'm, I'm I'll be top twenty five when I leave here. Right, right, right. You know, and, and like, 
people heard of me, but they didn't really know who I was. And you know, the, the marquee people at camp was Kevin Garnett, mm. Ron Bursa, at the mm -hmm. Vince Carter. Um it, it was at it was at Chicago facility, the Sh Chicago Bulls facility. So that was the that was one of the biggest camps. And, and, the and at really your home, because Jordan you do, right? Yeah, but it's, funny, it's, funny, it's funny because my first game I had like 36. Shit. And the second <laughs> my second game was against they put Kevin Garnett and Ron Mercer on the same team. Damn. And it and it's crazy because I didn't know who he was at the time. It was me. Right. It was me. And, no, I knew who they was, but it was me and Jermaine O'Neal on the same team. Mm. We were all in the eleventh. Jermaine was in tenth. Shit. So the marquee game was when we played them. It was really Kev, Ron, and Jermaine. Mm. That was the marquee game. Right, right, right. So I, by that time, I was like. I'm killing this game because all the scouts was there. NBA scouts, everybody right. was there. You know, everybody from the camp was sitting around the court. And I think I had 38 that game. Mm. Yeah, I had 38 that game. And then my last game, I had like 30. I think I had like 30-something in, in, in that camp. Now, I need to know when you had 38. Was Ron Mercy guarding you? Yeah. Okay. That's all I need to hear. Because, That's it. Uh, we, because we played the same position. Mm. And, and it's, it's crazy because we lost by two. We lost by two, and I, w I pulled up for the three with two seconds left. It rolled in and came out. Word. It, it, it was so crazy. I was scoring so easy after the game. Kevin Garnett was like, yo, you should have went to the basket. Wow. He's like, yo, we would have won the overtime. <laughs> we couldn't stop you. Wow. Yeah. And I know that, that 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 sticks with you. You know, I had games, and we all had games like that, right? Where you like, damn, I should have did that. But look, you was going for the kill, man. Yeah. So I, who I, would blame you? When when I when I talk about that game, I always tell people, I, if I had to do it again, I'm going for the three because I was I was so hot. Like I said, it went in and came out. So so at that at after that game, I knew I was respected because the rest of the camp. Kevin, I'm used to be like, yo, Rich, come sit with us. We want to watch this game. We want to <laughs> Come sit at the cool table. Come on. Like, the real party's over here, fam. Like, like the first first day I'm sitting in the corner by myself just watching games. Right, right, I right. Cool. I got cool with Jermaine. We chilling. But after that game, they was like, yo, we over here. We're going to watch. Oh, we're going to watch this game. We're going to watch Vince. We're going to do this. Yeah. Wow. So, then when I came home. I moved, I moved all the way up the ladder. Mmm. Nice, nice, nice. So so now, um, you finished the All-American camp. You dominate. Um, we know there are some schools recruit you, but Ray Haskins reached out to you. Nah, not in high school. I didn't mean... Who, re I didn't who reached... Like, how did you get there? We want to get to that process. How did we get you? there? After yes, uh, in high in high school, I I, I could have went anywhere I wanted. Like, you know, top coaches sitting in my living room trying to get me to come. Then I end up going, I end up going to to school in a junior college in Mesa, Arizona, Mesa Community College. Oh, okay, okay, right, okay, I went, right. I was there for a year, and I was just doing academics. I didn't play. So uh, while I was there, it's crazy once again. I was going to go to USC when Henry Bibby was there at the time. And Roger Rose had transferred there. Right, so right. Henry, Henry Bibby was reaching out to me almost every day. And Roger was writing me letters like, yo, come, we're Dominic, we're Dominic. Wow. So, But they had wanted me to go back to junior college the following year to play one more year. Like a lot of schools wanted me to go back to Mesa and play the last year. Play one more year. Because you sell out, you sell out a whole year, right? They, they yeah. probably didn't want to clean up some of that roster, whatever. They, yeah. They, they they wanted me to go back and play, and I came home and I connected with uh with Ray Haskins. I connected with Ray Haskins and Julius Allen was the co assistant coach. 
So then Ray Haskins brought me down to Brooklyn, and I already knew Charles because we played the Riverside together. Yeah. And, and I knew Mike. Right. You know, so I knew if I came to LIU, I knew what I was getting. You know, I had Charles and Mike. And then at that time, Greg Harden was on the team. Greg Harden played with me at Riverside. Right. So there was a lot of people I knew of me. But when I when I met Ray Haskins, I was like, he I was sold because Ray was like Ray Ray was one of my favorite coaches. Ray Ray was more like a father for me. So, you know, Ray Ray was running up Brooklyn style, uptown style, New York City style. We just ran and we led the nation two years in a row. So I mean, going back, when I met Ray, he was like, Yo, I want you to come here. He's like, I got you. I already knew Julian, so I was like, Charles, Charles, Mike, he's like, yo, you can be the big three in this in this league. So I was like, I definitely was. So once I visited the campus, I was like, yo, I'm coming here. Come on, I'll, I'll sign. Hmm. Wow. Let me tell you, I, I always thought Ray Haskins got a raw deal in New York City because there's no way you coached for eight years at Alexander Hamilton and go 179 and 14. <laughs> yeah, I see in that interview. It's ridiculous. Like, that's I, just I, some I, I, ridiculous. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta put this on record, too. Uh huh. I watched I watch Coach Haskin interview, and he keeps talking about yeah. how good he was, but I can't find nobody to verify that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Coach, I think Coach hung around all the nice players. <laughs> Right, because all the nice mates got to live in this neighborhood. So, oh, man. And, but, his, you know, his work and record speaks for itself. Yeah. And every team he touched, they always improved. They got better. Yeah. So, yeah. So, while, while y'all was there, how many times did you guys go to the uh, go to the tournament? We went to the tournament my first year, and then we went to the NIT my second year. Who did y'all lose to? In the tournament. In the tournament? We lost, yeah. we, lost, we lost to Villanova. And the second year, who y'all lost to in the conference championship? FDU. Damn, yo. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. and I didn't mean to say that because, yeah, I went there, yeah. It's nah. <laughs> we, we was up by 10 with like two minutes left. Let me tell you. I think uh, their left-hand guard, Elijah, was there at the Elijah. time, right? Elijah hit the yeah. three to win the game. Mike, at that time, my coach, and I think when Elijah them came too, my coach had had enough of having really talented guards and players and not let them go because yeah. he had such really good big men. And yeah. I think when Elijah came, and I, that's the reason why I was so happy for him because – he got to do his thing, do his thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas when we played, we got to do our thing when we played against the big teams, mm -hmm. right? When he couldn't call that bullshit no more, like the conference play. Yeah. But uh, you guys has always been tough and competitive in our league. And when I seen you guys make the turnaround and you guys had uh, yourself, Mike, who came up around my way, I knew Mike since I was a little kid, and oh. Charles. Uh, and then looking up to Ray Haskins, even though y'all played against FDU, I was rooting for you guys. Thank you, I appreciate. It. I mean, I mean, a lot of a lot of people in the city was rooting for us because we we was exciting. You know, like I said, we we led the nation two years in a row. We my first college game would be St. John's at St. John's that put us on the map. Yeah. Because St. John's ruled the city for a long time. A and long time. They, they had that draw spell. And when they had that draw spell, you guys ran the city. Yeah. They, literally. They, it's crazy because in the paper, before we played St. they had us losing about 50 points. But but Brian Mahoney was the coach. He recruited me. He knew who Charles was. He was like, nah, this ain't going to be easy. That's a, He said, that's a big East backcourt. Right. Facts. And, and, we, and, we beat, and we beat them at St. John's. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how was that after the game? Like, I know y'all came back to the NEC saying there ain't nobody with us. It it, it 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 was crazy because we, like I said, it was my first college game coming back. 
you know, it was Charles' first game after Rutgers. Yeah. It was Haskins coming out party. So, you know, we, wow. we, was, on, we was on cloud nine. But one thing, That's I, crazy. one thing I can say about Coach Haskins is he he had a, he oh every year he had a big schedule for us. We always schedule. You always played the really big teams. Yeah. So yeah. who's who's somebody else you guys some other guys in college that you guys played against or team that you guys played against? Um, besides Villanova, we played we played uh, University of Hawaii. We played. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. We had Did y'all go out to Hawaii? Yeah, we went out to the Hawaii tournament. Nice, we had, nice. We had a crazy schedule every year. We played Ohio State. We Minnesota. We played everybody. Like I think, I think mostly a lot of a lot of a few teams that we played. They had a they had one guy that went probably first round. Hmm. So coming up, we played, so coming up, we played, uh -huh. we played for Duel and they was number one in the country my, my sophomore year. Yo, Purdue always, for some reason, they always had all right team and never win anything. You know how many years I've known Purdue to be number one in, in college basketball? Yeah, and they, like, they, they was hyping them up. They was, that was my first game my sophomore year. They was number one. They had a uh, Brad Miller. Right. Uh, and they had Chad Austin. Chad Austin was a a, a parade all American. And they had Brian, wow. they had Brian Cardinal that played with Dallas. So mm. they, they had a big team. We played them at, at Purdue. The only thing was Charles and Mike didn't play that game. Were they injured? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. We, we lost our five. At that, that's when I knew, like, Coach Haskins always told me when I went there, he said, for the first two years, I'm going to get Charles in the NBA. The last two years, I'm going to get you in the NBA. So that game, Charles and Mike didn't play. He was like, yo, this shit coming out. This this is it right here. I had 39 in that game. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I had 39 in that game against Purdue. They was number one in the country. So it goes to show that you can score with the best of them and you can play with guys who are scoring a lot of points as well and distribute, right? And also get your points. You're not like a guy who's going to be frustrated because he's not getting his points. I think uh, overall, you're a guy who know how to turn it on when you need to turn it on and kind of balance it out when you need to when you play well, against with, well, well, with, with other guys. The thing with me was, I didn't get frustrated because in college I played the four and five, so I knew Brian. I knew Brad Miller couldn't guard me. I knew the base couldn't guard me. Jason Lawson them in the tournament. I knew Haskins always like, yo, we play small ball. So if I play the five and a six ten seven foot coming out, I'm taking them out and I'm beating them to the basket. But but I never got frustrated because I did more than just scoring. I was rebounding. Right. You know, I was actually, you know, I was actually the first play in LIU history to score over 1,500 points, 1,000 rebounds, 150 assists, and 150 kills. Damn. I was the first person in LIU history to do that. Wow. So I brought more to the table than just scoring. Right. We played Fresno State. I had 20 and 20. So, damn, I need to change that whole to, <laughs> from stand up to, to fucking legend. That, you, you know, because that that is uh, when you when you go to a school and you put up those kind of uh, stats and you, and you just kind of fill them up and do it at a high level, uh, that definitely leaves you on a different level. Yeah. Thank you. No, nah, no doubt. No doubt. So who is your toughest competition coming up? Like in the city, like when you, you knew when you met this guy, it was gonna be a battle. Um, it was a couple cats. Like you know, Madison always played Julia Richmond. They had a they had a crew. That was Ali Mo, uh, Courtney Miles, Huda, Virgil Smiley. So I knew they always had a crew. 
Martin Luther King always had a crew. That was the Brooklyn crew. So, you know, yeah. that, that was always war. And Brandeis, those were the main teams. Brandeis, King, Julie Richmond. But but nice. playing, against, playing against people always, people always put me up against Ali Mo, And people always put me up against 40 Miles Cooler. I would love to see those games. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, my man said, did Ali Mo pass away? Yeah, Ali Mo passed away about eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, Ali Mo. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, he, was, he was very good. Yeah, he was very good. See, Ali, right. Mo, Ali, Mo, Ali Mo was a big guard. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, Ali Mo was a big guard that could put the ball on the floor. Ali Mo was right. like a man of the Right. It's funny, it's funny, like, the story was never told that me, Ali Mo, Skip, Ray for Austin, mm. Tony Packett was all supposed to go to college and play together. That's, that would be crazy. <laughs> at, Fres at, Fresno, at Fresno State. Just, y'all have been in New UNLV. Y'all have been in New UNLV, shit. Jerry Tarkanian came to 55th to Rucker to get all four of us. Wow. Skip was the only one that went. Why didn't everybody else follow? Well, Ali Mo, Ali Mo was really doing, you know, he never, we was always supposed to go out there. He never, he never showed up. Total Packers got in his little situation. Right. Uh, when I went to Mesa, I was going to go, I was actually going to go to Fresno too. Skip was there already, but the plan was for me to go to Fresno City, Tarkanian son was coaching there, and then go to Fresno. Mm. When I went out there, we got caught up. We was at the light. Like, we just, it wasn't all, you know, nothing. It wasn't no issue that we, that we had with somebody else, but we went, we was out one night. Skip was taking me out, showing me around. And something happened at the gas station with a Mexican game. Now I'm like, yo, put me back on the play. I'm going back home. <laughs> <laughs> yo! Yeah, they, that's they crazy. Shot, they shot the car. Wow. The car, the car that was in front of us. Oh, uh, hey, my man said it's a little blurry. Your, your, your camera's a little blurry. Oh, so it wasn't meant for that. Now, yeah, it was meant for sure. Oh, he's like, I'm out of here. Yeah, a little bit more. It's blurry now. It's still blurry. I'm clear on this end. All right, so maybe it's going to come clear on, on, a, after, on a, after the watch through. All right, so now, who, who can you say, right, three players, the best in high school, the best in college, and the best pro you ever played against? And it could have been in college or in the tournament. Uh, high school, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. Nice. So let, no, let me, let me take that back. The that could have been played, best pro. <laughs> the first person I played against in high school was Allen Iverson. Oh. Where was that? When you played against him in Virginia? In Virginia. Okay. The Boo Williams tournament? Yeah, Boo, Way Boo Williams tournament. It, it was him. I, Boo Williams always had two people. It was him and Tony Rutledge in the backcourt. Tony, yeah. Tony went to Wake Forest. But I, Iverson was always tough. He was always tough. But besides Iverson, Kevin Garnett, those be my okay. three people. Okay. Uh, college, I would say Bonzi Wells. Peace, peace. What yeah. school did he go to again? Bonzi Wells went. Was it Bowling Green? He went he to one. Of, he went to one of the mid major schools where he was yeah. just killing everybody. No, he gave us fifty. He was. Dang. He was legit. He had a legit game. Mm. Nah, he had he had a legit game. And then uh, all right, before before you move on to the pro, right? I, I just I just want to say when you meet one of those players, one of those special players, and you like, no matter if he gave you 20, 30, 50, whatever, you know the difference between them and everybody else. Yeah, I mean, because at when when you when you at that level you recognize basketball. You know right. that somebody's legit. Like, 
Like AI, Kevin Garnett, Bonzi was legit pros at that at that stage. Like Kevin Garnett still had the same game when he was in high school. Wow. AI still had the same game as he in high school, so you can see the potential. He right. knew that they was they was legit pros at that time. Right. Same, same with Bonzi Wells. Hmm. Yeah, now it's circling. We good? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't, you're don't. still a little blurry. I just turn my uh, what's the name on, so hopefully that'll, that'll fix it a little bit. Yeah, you clear. Uh, we just got a few. Yeah, you good now? Um, so <laughs> now you, you you finished up. You you, you playing? Where did you uh you graduated from LIU? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. And what made you go into record? Everybody been asking me for like five years to, to take the class. I kept putting it off because it, I, I never really had time in my schedule to take the class. But I came to a point, I saw everybody else reffing. I'm like, I got I to do this because it still kept me in the game. Right, right. It still kept me, it still kept me in the loop. But once once I started reffing, then you see a game from a different perspective. So you know things, calls that you you would sit there and go, nah, I ain't traveling. Then then you start seeing it, so you start breaking the game right. down. But then I was coaching too, so the reffing helped me coaching because now I see the game from a different perspective. Oh wow! Now you're looking like an alien right now. You're breaking up crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck are you going? Yeah. But just from hearing how you uh, studied the game, always watched video tapes of the game, student of the game, uh, it only makes sense now during your down days of playing ball that you're able to referee and do a very good job at it, my brother. And even Thank when my team lost that day, uh, you gave some of my guys some words of encouragement, and they definitely took that. Thank you. I appreciate no, it. You know, I, I always try to give back and talk to them. That's real. That's real. So, what do you, um, last couple of words you want to leave our uh, audience before you get out of here, man? Just so, uh, you know, I appreciate you. I appreciate all the best, your podcast and everyone else that's doing it to give the young people history on the game. You know, like I said, when I grew up, I study my history, the people that paved the way for me to come, you know, yeah. whether it's football or NBA. You know, I don't think kids is doing that nowadays because, you know, you, you see some kids now and, I like like you said, I ref, so they look at me and they don't know who I am, but their parents are like, yo, that's such and such. Right, <laughs> so, you know, right, right, right. So, you know, the parents got to break it down to them, but that when I was back in the days, when I was in their shoes, I knew who such and such was. There you go. Because I studied my history, but you know that's right. you know kids gotta study their history. Right. Who that right there, fam? Who is that? That's you, fam. Oh that's yeah. You know what you we do here, basketball heads, right? That's the picture that you had up. Yeah. That's, there that's you dope. go. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? And we'll be sending this to you soon, my brother. Yeah, thank you. I need that. That's dope. Uh, listen, I like that. I, 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 listen, this is one of the better ones he did. He got some, he did some really, no, no, <laughs> he got some nice ones. Everybody gets one. Um, But this is dope. A nice nah, that's action dope. joint. That's and dope. here go Coach Haskins right here. Yeah, that's him. That's Coach that's Haskins. Got and then you got Ice right here. Oh, yeah. Jerry Ice Burnham's. Then he got Kenny Anderson and everybody right there. So when we get finished, you know, and uh, once no, we, cool. yeah, 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 we gonna send them out to you guys, and you know, just show our appreciation, man. This is something that we wanted to do. Uh, both of us are ball players. I played at Lincoln and Fairly Dickinson, and he played at Jackson. So okay. uh, we're, we're city guys, man. We're PSL to the heart. 
And we love our Catholic school guys too, and our street ball players. You know what I'm saying? So we want to try to give everybody a, a home and a platform so they can come on and tell a story. Yeah, we appreciate y'all. Yeah. We appreciate y'all. No doubt, no doubt. So, Rich, I ain't gonna hold you too longer, man. Too much longer. Uh, well, at this point, we just want you to think about some people who you want to nominate to come on Basketball Heads. And, you know, you just hit me up and be like, yo, G, this somebody I think you should interview. Yeah. Pick up the cat. And I need some more Harlem cats, right? I got all okay. my Brooklyn cats. You know what I'm saying? Got cats from Queens, whatever. I need my Harlem cats to represent. I got you. I'm going to hit you up with some names. All right, my dude. All right. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. Salute. All right. All right. Thank you for coming by, people. I hope y'all appreciate it and enjoy my man's story. For sure. Sufficient. Richie Parker. All right.